Hi, this is Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii. We're here, we're going to speak about uh, the first 60 days of President Trump in, 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 in office. Uh, how do you think he's doing for the first 60? Well, I don't want to make this long and drawn out, so what I'm going to say is for eight years I've, I've taught my grandchildren to do things a certain way and obey certain types of rules and behaviors. And let's say that all of a sudden, eight years later, I'm on a two-month vacation. And for 60 days or more, my grandchildren have been disobeying every single rule they've been taught, every uh, behavior mode they've been learned, uh, they've learned to adapt and play out. But now, 60 days later, they're running wild and they're doing everything completely uh, the opposite of the right way that they, they, that, that they should have done it. What if your grandchildren was doing this as a strategy? You know, I wouldn't put it past them because for their age, they're re really, really smart. And so, for instance, my uh, oldest granddaughter will see her older brother playing with a toy that she wants and bring him a toy that's not as interesting but convince him that it is so that he'll pr play with it so that she can get the toy that she really wants. And when he finally realizes that he's been duped, there's nothing he can do about it. So that's my analogy. Well, it's a good one. Uh, I haven't thought of it that way, but I appreciate you wanting to share it that one. Let me ask you this. Uh, you know, a lot of people said, let's not judge some of the antics that took place during the election. Right. Some of the things that were said, some of the things that were tweeted. Uh, let's just start fresh, clean slate. Let's see how the first 100 days will go with the presidency. What do you think? Well, to loosely use a Buddhist analogy, it had to take something like this to wake the American people up to finally realize that they need to take their country back and they need to have a say in certain things. Does that make sense? Well, it makes sense, but that's the tagline he used, we're taking back our country. So he used that very strategy right. to convince um, a lot of the voters that it was time to take, whatever that means, to take our country back. I'm not sure from what, but right. he convinced... <laughs> He convinced a lot of folks that that's what we're going to do and that's why you should vote for me. So, But um, let's just talk about the headlines of the day. Yesterday we had the director of the FBI confirm that there was no definitive evidence that Trump Tower was being either surveilled or um, was being bugged or wiretapped. Um, that has been played out by every agency out there saying there's no credible evidence. What do you think, what was he thinking when he allegated that President Obama um, had actually had him wired. Well, it's like a man having an affair behind his wife's back and he's been caught, so he's got to misdirect everything somewhere else. So the suspicion is not placed upon the real issue. And of course, we know the real issue is that he probably was not wiretapped. And the issue, as we've seen this morning and yesterday, is, is the, the thing with Russia. Well, a lot of people have suspected that's why he brought up that allegation at 3 in the morning or on the weekend. Uh, he tweeted that uh, he was being wiretapped just to divert attention away from the investigation. That's now a criminal investigation. Were you aware of that? I've been aware of it. And, you know, now that he's, uh, no pun intended, been caught with his pants down, he's got to answer for it. Um, some people are thinking this could actually lead to, a, a, you know, similar to a Watergate uh, incident where there could be either an impeachment process or a resignation. Do you buy into that? Uh, if that does happen, all, all I will say is uh, hopefully this time we learn from that lesson and do not revisit that again in uh, 10, 30 years when a next presidential election happens and another person like Trump pops up. Hopefully we won't repeat this. Now, obviously, that's a very extreme, extreme thing to happen, mm -hmm. either a resignation of a president of the United States or, or an impeachment of the president of the United States. Let's assume that doesn't happen at this point. What do you think down the road here, 2018, when we're, re we're re uh, replacing those seats that became available in the House and the Senate, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think um, there's going to be a swing back to the Democrat side because of the antics of President Trump? What I think is going to happen is, uh, and it sounds sort of uh, poetic and maybe uh, too dreamy, but I think at uh, that point the people are going to rise up and, and finally have a say as to which way they want their lives to be governed and which way the world should spin, actually. Because this issue with the United States is now a world issue. And everyone around the globe is watching us and watching to see what happens. And some people in the United States are, are not buying into that. Uh, they don't want the United States to be laughed at anymore. You think the wor world leaders are, are hoping that this doesn't get any worse and that they do have to step up to the plate? I think that's what they're hoping doesn't happen. Uh, I don't think the world leaders want to really get involved, but 
With what's been going on lately in the news internationally, it seems like a lot of world leaders are not happy.